to everybody today. I miss Coast Pete and this is my show, Mid Rock Crisis. So we're gonna save some rock today. I'm gonna talk about Ultravox. It's a Brit new wave band. They began life as Tiger Lily in 1973. And they're best known for their single, Vienna, in 1981. 74 to 79, John Fox was the prime mover of Ultravox. He left for a solo career. It must be difficult to make music with people you know. So many artists opt for solo careers. Midger took over vocals and guitars. And Yuri was a breath of fresh air and Ultravox became commercially viable. And this lineup lasted until 1988. The keyboardist Billy Curry reformed the band in 1992, but Ultravox was now Ultranaut. The best known lineup was Curry on keys, Yuri on guitar and lead vocals, bassist Chris Cross and drummer Warren Kahn performed again in 2008. Their new album was a success and it went to number 21 in the UK in 2012. They toured with Simple Minds, a band, not a condition of a low IQ. These shows were the end of Ultravox for once and for all, but back in 73, Tiger Lily became the Zips, Fire of London, London soundtrack, and the Damned before discovering that there was already a Damned band. Ultravox signed with Island Records, the exclamation on their name it's Ultravox exclamation mark. Was included to give a kraut rock impression, like new, which also had a an exclamation mark after their name. This band was influenced by Roxy Music, the New York Dolls, David Bowie, and Kraftwerk. In other words, glam. Their debut album was co-produced by Brian Eno and Steve Lillywhite. The album failed to chart. John Fox decided to try to live life with no emotions like Mr. Spock on Star Trek. He wrote a song called, I Wanna Be a Machine. And I guess he meant it. In 77, the new album, Ha Ha Ha, also failed the chart. It was almost the 80s, so synth pop was tried on the track Hiroshima Monomore. It became a proto synth pop statement. The future is here and it's no laughing matter. In 78, punk was losing steam and many Brit punk bands jumped ship to the new wave genre. Steve Shears was replaced by Robert Simon on guitar. The band dropped the exclamation mark. The new lineup played the Reading Festival with the Radio Stars, Penetration, Sham 69, The Pirates, and The Jam. They're all on that menu. The Jam on the menu. See, you get that? Island dropped Ultravox. At the end of 78, the band split for the first time in 79. And Fox's solo career also stalled. He ended up in a band called Magazine. In 1980, Billy Curry was recruited by Gary Newman and Tubeway Army. Newman liked Ultravox, considered them avant-garde, and really that's what they were. And the public would catch up eventually. Midger had success with glam band Slick 
and the Rich Kids. He was also a member of Thin Lizzy for a while. Curry asked Uri to join Ultravox and the subsequent album Vienna was considered a recapitulation and was their most successful work yet. It included the band's first charting single, Sleepwalk, and was released on Chrysalis in 1980. It went to number 29, and the album went to number 14. Gary Newman was right, kind of. The title track of Vienna, which was inspired by a 1949 film, The Third Man, was given a distinctive treatment on video, and this broke the logjam. Vienna's single went to number two in the UK. The next album, Rage in Eden, proves more difficult. The victorious Vienna sequel gave the band's fits and took three months in the studio. And that's a good way to lose money and momentum. But the album did well. It charted to number four in the UK. George Martin produced the next album, Quartet. It went to number 60, I'm sorry, number six in the UK and number 61 in the US. And George Martin commented that he hadn't seen a band of this caliber in quite some time. A major world tour was recorded and released as a live album which reached the top 10. And then in 1984, the new single Love's Great Adventure peaked at number 12 due to a massive radio airplay. They appeared at Live Aid in 85, the new lineup without Uri formed in 92, but they had no success until 2008 to present Warren Kahn, Chris Cross, Billy Curry, and Majur voxed up for another go. This lineup hadn't performed together since Live Aid in 85. They toured the UK, Germany, and Belgium, and Majur managed to film portions of the tour for use in a rockumentary. Ultravox's 11th studio album, Brill, Yint, was put out in 2012, and in 2013, Ultravox retired. Then in 2017, Majur was interviewed by the Daily Express about a rumor of another reunion crushed it. Visage, Gary Newman, and Ultravox gave the world techno. Thanks so much. By the way, Gary Newman rules. You know that. Here's the albums in 77 Ultravox. Very good introduction. This is good rock, not great. It's a little punk. A little glam. And 77 also, ha, ha, ha. Still more Bowie than Gary Newman. It's harsh, but danceable. Fast and cerebral. 78, Systems of Romance. It's cosmopolitan, but charged up. And plenty of guitar work. You know, East Coast Pete likes a little guitar work, or a lot. 81, Rage in Eden. Great lyrics, never boring, very dynamic and melodic. And then in 82, Quartet. The band was a little too 80s for me. And then we skip a whole bunch of time and a bunch of albums. Uh, you get to Brilliant in 12, 2012 that is. It's very proggy, but they have the millennial, whoa, gotta have that. The final lineup was Criss Cross on bass, 
synth backing vocals, Warren Kahn on drums and vocals, Mid Ure on lead vocals, guitar and synth. Hi ho! That's a Vonnegut quote. And I didn't mention this before, but Ultravox was actually a prelude for the incredibly original and talented Depeche Mode. I know I've been critical of 80s rock, particularly with the advent of electronic music, but if you saw my Radiohead show, I praise them for tasteful use of synthesizers. I'm also a big fan of Gary Newman, and I'll get around to him, or actually I have gotten around to him. When researching artists that I like, I often find that they were influenced by acts I may have overlooked for who knows why. But to understand the artist, one has to put them in the context of their own times. It's one way I discover artists I didn't know, and some that maybe I didn't like. But this is one of the ways we used in our How to Save Rock reason, raison d'etre. To save rock, we must dig into how the artists became successful and popular, and we listen to what they listened to and liked, just like going back to the first album or the first three albums, and I call my show the first three, except I usually want to hear more than just three, for better or worse. Thanks for being with me. I'll be back on Midrock Crisis soon, I hope. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.